Hi, I'm Andrea Uzzardi and I work on the Swarm team. So today we're going to talk about um, Docker 112. So we're going to do a deep dive into the uh, architecture internals. So let's start with cluster topology. Um, a Swarm is composed of nodes, like a node is the base unit of computation for a Swarm. And uh, you create a Swarm by joining multiple nodes together. A node is simply any machine running uh, Docker Engine 112. So there are two kinds of nodes. We have manager nodes, uh, which are performing uh, all the uh, scheduling, orchestration, and so on. And then we have uh, worker nodes, uh, which are only responsible to uh, take work, execute it, and report back on the status. So. Um, since they're doing uh, things completely different, uh, manager and workers uh, communicate in a very different way. So uh, managers have a, a quorum, so they use a protocol named Raft, which allows them to exchange information with a strong consistency. And on the other side, uh, workers use a different protocol to communicate, which is named Gossip. Uh, which allows them to uh, share information in bulk. Uh, and even though it's only eventual consistent, it converges very, very fast and uh, allows worker to scale uh, massively. So in a typical uh, Swarm cluster, you would have, let's say, uh, three, five, seven maximum uh, managers and many, many workers. A node is not... Uh, the role of a node is not static. In fact, you can, through the API, you can dynamically change um, any node and you can decide whether it should be a manager or worker and then change them uh, dynamically at runtime. So we covered how managers talk uh, with each other and how uh, workers talk to each other, but uh, in order for workers and managers to talk to each other, we're using uh, yet another uh, protocol, which is gRPC. So gRPC is a very uh, fast and uh, optimized protocol, which is built on top of HTTP2. So it allows to, um, to communicate through the internet very easily since it's something that's been supported forever. So it works through proxies and so on and so on. And one nice aspect of gRPC, um, is that the protocol itself is versioned. So it means that uh, different versions of workers are actually able to talk to a different version of the managers and that's handled transparently. Okay, so, um, so one of the reasons um, managers are part of a quorum is that it allows them to share information uh, persistently and in a fault-tolerant way. We use that as an embedded uh, store, so you don't have to set up a key value store. There are many advantages uh, with that. So the first one, of course, is that uh, you don't need to have any dependency on an external um, infrastructure. Uh, so it's much easier to, to set up and operate. Uh, a side effect of that is also that managers are gonna communicate through the um, like embedded uh, TLS encryption system. So you don't have to, uh, again, operate and maintain a separate uh, security infrastructure. Another advantage of having um, the store embedded is performance. So since uh, we're not using a, a generic data store, but instead uh, we roll out our own, it means that we're able to do many optimizations. So every single manager um, actually has an, the entire uh, desired state uh, cached in memory, which allows them to make very fast decisions. Okay. So we briefly talked about fault tolerance and let's see in action what happens when uh, one of the managers goes down. Let's say uh, we have uh, this manager here. Uh, for some reason, the machine goes down. All the, all the workers are actually aware of every single manager that's, that's running a swarm. So whenever um, a manager goes down, the workers that were connected to it will detect that and will automatically reconnect uh, to another manager on the swarm. So those two managers here will um, randomly dispatch the two remaining available managers. So um, 
between managers, uh, there's a, a leader election going on. So one of the managers is elected as a leader, and the leader is responsible to uh, perform some operations such as uh, scheduling containers or ensuring that the, the state is consistent. In the case uh, we lose uh, the leader, the, so for the workers, it's exactly the same process. They will, those connected to the leader will automatically reconnect to another manager. But um, the other managers also are aware that the leader uh, went down and will perform a leader election on its behalf. So, uh, which means that eventually another manager is going to be elected as leader and will pick up when, where the, the leader left. So uh, one of the main advantages of uh, 112 is that it ships with uh, orchestration secure out of the box. So what does it mean exactly? Well, every node has uh, what we call a uh, crypto identity. So it's identified by a certificate, uh, which is signed by a, a certificate authority and is centrally managed. And so there's no way that one node can assume the identity of another role without us noticing. Um, the way it works uh, is that every manager um, has a, a CA built in. And so whenever uh, a new node wants to join, um, wants to join a swarm, uh, you have to give it uh, a join token. So a join token is a uh, is an opaque uh, string that you give to the join command, and it contains some information encoded. So first of all, it contains the uh, fingerprint of the swarm CA, which means that the worker is able to trust that it's actually joining the right uh, entity. And at the same time, uh, that token also contains a secret that allows the manager to make sure that the worker that is currently joining was actually authorized to, to, to join the swarm. So um, the worker will present uh, the token to the manager. Now they can trust each other since uh, they're aware of their identity. And the worker will generate a certificate, give it back to the manager. The manager will sign it using the CA returning back to the worker, and now the worker can use that certificate to talk to any other uh, node in the cluster, and it will be uh, identified by the new uh, crypt identity, which is embedded into the certificate. Um, every once in a while, so by default, it's 90 days, so about three months, um, the certificates expire, so there's a built-in renewal process. Um, so, a few weeks before the certificate expires, the worker will actually generate a new certificate and repeat the same process. So get it signed by the manager, get the new version, and then swap out the old cert with the new one, which means that they uh, will automatically rotate without human intervention. Thank you for watching, and please check out the links in the description for more information.